Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming to my concert titled The Songs of the Decades, the 20s through the 60s. I'm going to reintroduce you to the songs of the 20s through the 60s in several different concerts during the season. Tonight I'll spend the evening playing songs that were written in the 20s. Let me tell you about this wonderful gift we have here with a Sterling Lowry organ. This was donated to Kingsgate Club by a couple who wanted to move into the club but didn't have room for the organ this size. Let's start off with a great song that we all know, God Bless America. The song was written in 1918 by Irving Berlin while in the army at Camp Upton in New York. Kate Smith used it in her radio show on Armistice Day, and it became her signature song for peace in 1938. The 20s was a decade that marked the beginning of the modern music era. We all, we all used the old wax cylinders to play our music with. It was introduced by Thomas Edison in 1877. How many of you folks actually remember playing with one of those things? The 20s brought on the dance band, the sounds of prohibition, and the roaring 20s sound. Next. The Roaring 20s. The 1920s, a decade of great change, new freedoms, economic and technological boom, cultural and artistic dynamism. A decade of hot jazz, short skirts, and clandestine booze. A glittering decade suspended precariously between two world wars. In America, we called it the Jazz Age. The Brits proclaimed it the Golden Age, and the French declared them Annie Faux the crazy years.
that you don't want to get confused with Swanee Rhythm. I've been away from they have two different songs. Time. It was written in New York in 1919 by George Gershwin, lyrics by Irving Caesar. The song was written by Gershwin and Caesar at the age of 20. They wrote the song in about 10 minutes while riding on a Manhattan bus, and when it was finished up in Gershwin's apartment, Al Jolson heard the song and wanted to put it in his show, Sinbad. I've been away from and then it was a long time. I never thought I'd miss you so. Somehow I feel your love is real. Near you, I want to be. The birds are singing, it is song time. The banjo's drumming soft and low. I know that you yearn for me too. You're calling me Swanee. How I love you, how I love you, my dear old Swanee. I'd give the world to be among the folks in CIX. I even know my mammy. Birth of the Blues, composed by Ray Henderson, lyrics by Buddy De Silva and Lou Brown, in 1926. It was the first used on in the Broadway review, George White's Scandals in 1926. See, they had scandals back then, too. It was recorded by Paul Whiteman and sung by Jack Fulton, Harry Rickman, and the Reveliers in 1926. The song became more popular in 1941, sung by Mr. Bing Crosby. They heard the breeze singing weird melody through the trees, and they made that the start of the blues.
some of those jazzy songs back then? Carolina in the Morning was composed by Walter Donaldson and lyrics by Gus Kahn in 1922. The song debuted in the elaborate musical The Passing Show, also in 1922. It was also later used in the Paramount Pictures' The Lemon Drop Kid in Down Yonder in New Orleans it was composed by Turner Layton, and the lyrics were by Harry Kramer in 1922. He advertised the song as a southern song without any mammies, mules, or the moon. This, of course, was a dig on Tin Pan Alley era. The song was sung in the Broadway musical Spice in 1922. It was recorded by Paul Whiteman. This song was performed by Harry Connick Jr. in the 2005 fund raising for Hurricane Katrina. It drew in over $50 million for the restoration of Katrina's damage.
Sidewalks of New York, composed by Charles Lawler. He was walking home from a gig in New York City, got the feeling for this melody. He had always sung other composers' songs, and he wanted to get one of his own. He stayed up all night putting the melody together, and by morning, he raced back to the hat store where he was working and hummed the melody to his friend James Blake. And within a few minutes, he had the lyrics down on paper. It became famous by Lottie Gibson. The words of the song tell the story of Blake's youth. In 1996, it became the theme song for the Belmont Stakes Horse Race which was the third leg of the Triple Crown horse race, which was probably remembered best when Frank Sinatra made it popular again. Sorry Now was written by Ted Snyder and the lyrics by Bert Kalmer and Harry Ruby in 1923. Islam Jones took the song to number three in 1923. The song was also featured in the Marx Brothers film A Night in Casablanca, 1946. Connie Francis in 1958 took the song to fourth place on the Billboard Hot 100 chart her single had the most longevity and became the first of her eight gold records.
Bye Bye Blackbird, the song was published in 1926 by Ray Henderson and the lyrics by Walt Dixon. Pack up all my cares and woe Here I go Singing low Bye, bye Blackbird Where's somebody It is considered a popular standard and was first recorded by Sam Lennon's Dance Orchestra in March 1926. At the end of the song, listen to the birds sing. My Blue Heaven is is a popular song by Walt Donaldson, with lyrics by George Whiting. The song was written in 1924 and used in the Ziegfeld Follies in the 1927s. In 1928, the song became a huge hit on Victor for crooner Gene Austin, accompanied by the Victor Orchestra and directed by Nat Skillrett. It stayed on the charts as number one for 13 weeks and sold over 5 million copies, becoming the best-selling single of the time it was introduced into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 1978. Can you remember that 5 million copies back in the 20s? That's a lot.
California, Here I Come. It was written in 1921 for the Broadway musical Bombo, starring Al Jolson. The song was written by Buddy De Silva, Joseph Meyer. The song was sung by Al Jolson and recorded by him in 1924. It became the unofficial song of the California, of California, but another song, Love You California, was actually voted in by the legislature in 1951 as the official song of California. was composed in 1926 as a last-minute addition for the Rogers and Hart musical Betsy. The song only ran for 39 performances. Blue Skies was an instant success.
Hey, good looking. Yes, I was talking to you. <laughs> is a 1951 song written by Hank Williams, and his version was introduced to the Hall, the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2001. It has also been recorded by several other artists. The Hank Williams song was inspired by another song by the same name, written by Cole Porter in 1942. The lyrics of Williams' version began as a come on for a double entity related to food preparation. How about cooking something up with me? By the third and fourth version, the singer promises the object of his affection that they can become an exclusive couple. How about keeping steady company? And I'm going to throw my date book over the fence. Williams, with musician Johnny Dickens, having told Dickens that he needed a hit song to be recorded if he wanted to become a star. Williams said he would write it and pen it, hey, good looking, and, and he did it in 20 minutes. While on the plane with Dickens, Minnie Pearl and her husband, Henry Connors, later Williams recorded it himself, telling Dickinson, this song is too good for you. <laughs> A lot of stuff going on back those days. My Shadow is a 1927 popular song. Officially, the credits showed it went, was written by Al Jolson, Billy Rose, and Dave Dreyer. In fact, Billy Rose was exclusively a lyricist, Dreyer a composer, Al Jolson was a performer who was often given credit so that he could make more money. The actual appointments of credits would be music by Dreyer, lyrics by Billy Rose, and possible some small contribution by Al Jolson. The song has become a standard with many artists performing it. In the movie Funny Lady, Billy Rose admits to his wife, Fanny Bryce, that the shadow in the song was Nicky Armstein, Fanny Bryce's criminal husband before Rose. Thank you. 
Got Fun was a popular foxtrot published in 1921 with the music by Richard Whiting and the lyrics by Richard Egan and Jerome Kern. It was performed in 1920 in the Frank Cohn and Marcus Review satire of the 20s, then moved into vaudeville and recordings. Ain't We Got Fun and its jaunty response to poverty and its promise to have fun every morning, every evening, and in the meantime, and in between times have become symbolic of the Roaring Twenties, and it appears in some major literature of the decade, including The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald and in Dorothy Parker's award-winning short story, 1929, Big Blonde.
Yeah, that's all, folks.